So I wanted to talk a little bit about the idea of Zoya as a multi-effects processor in the style of a Zoom or a Line 6 or, you know, pick your poison. Because I think there's a misconception that uh, using Zoya in this manner is a lot more complicated than it is with those. And I think there are a couple of conceptual issues that you have to understand. But I really don't think that if you want to use Zoya as a multi-effects processor, uh, that it's much more difficult than, than any of those other options out there. So what I have here is a blank patch, and I'm going to set up a, a multi-effects patch really quick. Um, probably the, the most difficult concept is that different modules do different things. So interface modules as a category are modules that you have to place in order for Zoya to interact with the outside world. Um, in our case, we're going to need an audio input, and I'm going to go down and select the channel to be the left input. So we're going to do mono, but we could do stereo um, if we wanted. And then after that, I'm going to place some effects. The effects modules are pre-built uh, effects that, that come with Zoya that you can plug in. And they're pretty much ready to go right out of the box, just like different effects would be in any other multi-effects processor. So I'm going to pick a delay with mod. Um, I'm going to use a bucket brigade type. And there are options when you place the, the uh, modules. We're going to keep it mono for now. After this, I'm going to put an overdrive, and I'm going to select the model as the germ drive, and finally I'm going to place a phaser. And I chose some slightly unconventional signal chaining because I think one of the advantages of something as flexible as Zoya is that you can add it to your existing lineup and, and do things that that your signal chain isn't set up to do. So a lot of people wouldn't necessarily have a phaser at the end of their signal path or a delay early in their signal path. And so you can set up patches that allow you to explore uh, different orders of effects than, than might be easy for you to, to set up with your current uh, arrangement. Then finally, we're gonna add one more interface module I scrolled way too far. We just want an output. And this one's going to be stereo. Let's use the gain control. This just allows us to affect the, the volume of the patch if we want to later. And then connecting in Zoya really isn't all that complicated. You have outputs and you have inputs. And inputs connect to outputs and, and so on. So we just want to connect these, and we can attenuate them if we wanted to. And if I pick up my guitar, we have the sound that we want. And if we go through, we have some different ways to tweak things. Um, we can adjust different parameters. I'm going to turn up the resonance on the phaser, because I like a chewy phaser. And this is just like adjusting any other parameter on any other multi-effects unit. I think I'm going to turn down the, the time on the delay. I want something a little bit faster. And there you have it. Um, I'm going to show one more step that, that really isn't that complicated, but we get a lot of questions about it on the Facebook group, and, and I see it all over the place. Um, 
which is just adding switches to all of these so that you can use the stomp switches down here. Now, to use all three stomp switches, you have to, to get into, into auxiliary mode, which is indicated by this aqua uh, shift button. And that's done by holding down the middle and right stomp switch most of the time. So when it's green, you can only use this stomp switch on a given patch, and these are used to scroll between patches. But if you press down on both of these, it'll turn aqua, and then you have access to all three of these. And I'm just going to real quickly show how to, to make it so that you can switch each of these effects on and off, okay? Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break our audio connections. Leave the one for the phaser in place. I'm going to move things around a little bit just to give myself some more room. So I'm going to move the distortion onto another page. I'm going to move the phaser onto that page too. I'll move the outputs onto that page, just so it's easier to see what I'm doing. And this process then is pretty simple. Um, what I'm going to do is go to audio modules, and audio modules deal with with uh, the audio signal. And I'm going to do an audio out switch. And I want two outputs. I'm going to connect my input to that. I'm going to send one output into the delay, and I'll hold off on connecting the next output because it's going to go to the next switch. So we want another switch. Now we're going to connect this output to the next switch. So when this is when this is off. This just goes on to the next switch. It doesn't go through the delay. We're going to connect the output of the delay to this switch as well. So if the audio passes through one channel or the other, it reaches this next switch. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to connect one of the outputs to the distortion. We're going to put in one more audio switch. We're going to make sure this is the right type of audio switch, because apparently I put in the wrong one. So I want an audio out switch, so it chooses which output it goes to. In one case, it just passes the output on to the next stage. In the other case, it passes it on to uh, the effect. Then we have one more of these to do. Since the phaser is connected to both outputs. We want our clean signal to pass to both outputs too. And if I play now, clean signal. Um, then we need an interface module. We're going to need three of them. So what I'm doing here is selecting latching stomp switches. So when you press the stomp switch, it holds its, its state. Um, and this one is set up for the middle one. I'm going to connect it to the stage for the distortion. And if I press this now, nothing happens because I forgot to make this connection. We just have distortion. I'm going to set this up for the right stomp switch for the phaser. And finally for this one, I'm going to use the left stomp switch to turn on the delay. And the 
way that this is set up, the delay has trails, but you could set it up in another way uh, using an audio in switch here instead of an out switch and have the de delay cut off. But I think most people like having trails. So uh, the audio that's passing through the delay continues to pass through to the delay to the next switch. And now you can turn on and off Phaser. Turn them all on. So that's the Zoya as a multi effects processor. Um, it's not really how I use Zoya, but a lot of people, I think, would like to have the option at least to, you know, have a, a little box that can handle a lot of different multi-effects stuff. And I think there's this idea that it's more complicated than it is, you know, outside of the switching, which is just a matter of thinking through the signal path, you know, uh, the one that I forgot here, you know, is that I just forgot that, oh right, the delay has to go to the next part. So once I remembered that, it was pretty simple. Um, and if you don't get sound and you think you should get sound, you know, think through the signal path. Uh, how is audio supposed to get from one place to the other? And make sure the connections are in place. But after that, you know, I mean, it's just adjust the parameters you want to adjust, like any other multi-effects. Um, you know, and if we're being perfectly honest, the multi-effects that have a bunch of different stomp switches, you usually have to do something to assign those in a particular way or enter some weird menu or, you know, Zoya, as complicated as it is, it's not menu divey. It's just knowing the process. And the process, particularly for something like this, is just thinking about how audio moves through your signal, you know. So if you're having a switch and it goes one way or the other, it has to go both of the ways. Um, so that's this little tutorial on Zoya's multi-effects processor unit and, and how to set up a, a simple, you know, three effect on off. You can get a lot more complicated. You can go crazy. If any of you have seen some of my patches on patch storage, I, I do a lot of weird stuff with Zoya, but Zoya, can do a really good job, I think, as a pretty utilitarian, like, I need overdrive and phaser and delay, uh, or even a more experimental approach to multi-effects where you say, I need those things, but what does it sound like if I put the delay first? Um, which is harder to do, again, in a, you know, a dedicated signal path. So that's just the idea I wanted to discuss and to show how to, to set up a, a patch like this. So I hope it was helpful. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions. Uh, thank you.